Hi guys, I'm Shalise with Illuminati. How are you guys doing today? Good. Hi, good. Thank you. So, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I see today's been a really, really busy day for everyone. So I'll jump right into it. Um, so you guys, can you talk to me a little bit about what the filming process was like for this? I mean, it's a the whole different world um, that's non-existent in reality. So like you guys have to create this. What was that like compared to filming other shows or movies that you guys have done? It was huge. <laughs> um, so they built most of the the sets so the road they built the whole row it's a whole street worth of um sets and then where we are Bellfire hall they built three or four rooms together big stairway so it's it's this massive massive thing um so stepping onto it was so magical because you really are transported into the world and into a completely other world also yeah. the costumes are huge and beautiful and intricate and so you really very easily um, become these characters. Yeah. Already, yeah. What was it like? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it just does all that stuff does all the work for you. You know, you don't have to imagine, uh, being in a bale fire hall, you know, the, the, the seat of, of power in the Berg, they built it, you know, they built the costumes, they built the, you know, 20 foot high ceilings and, um, almost everything was practical. You know, of course there are CGI elements, but that's, what's so impressive I think that's what's so lovely and pleasurable to watch about this show is that the prosthetics and, and all the um, details are all, they've all been made by incredible crafts, craftspeople uh, um, in Prague. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy to me that this happens and that's how TV is made, but I, it makes me so happy because as an actor, it's an absolute, it's a toy box. It's a playground. It's great. Yeah, it's like so they put in a lot of work to make it as realistic as possible when it looks great. You would really think that it was a real place. It's kind of like how I used to think Diagon Alley in Harry Potter was a real place. It's yeah. just like that. It's um, really without any spoilers or anything, um, was there any particular episode in this uh, the series, sorry, not series, in this season that changed your character arc or maybe the path that your character was going on without any spoilers, of course? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for us, um, it really ramps up around episode five. <laughs> it's a good episode for us. We had a lot to play with. Um, yeah, isn't it? But we all in throughout the season, there are there are twists and turns all over the place. Kind of never know where you are. It's never it's never easy. It's never settled. Something is always shifting, and something always getting thrown in the way. Um, it would definitely keep people on their toes for sure. And for your yeah. character. Yeah, every episode, every episode is 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 you know you think it's going one way, and the next episode, especially between Sophie and Sophie and Jonah, um, yeah, each, there's a kind of pivot each episode, and so you can never quite anticipate what the next moves are going to be, and uh, yeah, I think people are going to enjoy that. Well, like you guys were saying how this was all built and um, the whole world is something that they've created. It's a running theme in film and in TV that people take props home, right? Like people take something that they can have a little bit of memorabilia for themselves. Was there anything that you guys have taken from set without incriminating yourself, something minor that you may want to take as a, um, a remembrance of the of the season? It's so sad that you say that because, because we had to leave. Uh, because we, we, we finished our filming, um, for, for, for mine and Caroline's stuff um, before the pandemic. And we left in a, in a hurry because Prague was literally shutting down. So we didn't have that kind of chance to, um, yeah. you know, steal a, a, a ring or a, a neckerchief or, you know, and it, it actually, I just haven't thought of that until you've brought that up. It makes me sad because I'd love to have some piece of memorabilia. Um, maybe, maybe we can, we can. We can season? <laughs> That's no. I actually, I actually do have something. Um, it's from I know, no, but it was from the first season, and actually, it was a gift. I didn't steal it, <laughs> but it is the um, it was one of the pieces of paper that says Sophie Breakspear. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, okay. Um, which is really nice because that was that was a nice moment. Yeah, I've heard it. that um, some of the other interviews they were telling me that a lot of stuff was like wrapped in plastic during COVID, so like they couldn't like just take some of the things. So I was wondering if there was anything that people kind of snuck out. Um, but as you guys said, that this is a show that everyone seems to really really like. Um, I always look at Rotten Tomatoes audience score because that's the one that matters. Um, that one's at eighty eight percent for you guys, which is great. So I was wondering what can fans expect in the future? Um, apart from this season, other seasons, or maybe any kind of spinoffs? Is there any conversation around that? 
No, I think that the the um, plan is for it to end on this season. I think they wrap it up pretty nicely. Obviously, you know, you never know. But I think I think the way they conclude it is is pretty final. And that's great for viewers because you're actually watching a full story from start to finish. Um, yeah. And this is one of those shows that a lot of people, I go to Comic-Con every year. I've been for about seven years now. And this is one of the shows that allows people to actually have characters that they can dress up as. Um, have you guys ever went to Comic-Con and dressed up as any of your favorite characters? Or if you guys went, would you love to see people dressed up as you guys? Like, what's that feeling like? Yeah. I would love that. <laughs> I would love to see people dressed up as, as Sophie. Um, but I don't, I think there are much more exciting characters to dress up from Carnival Row. Um, unfortunately, if I was going to go to Comic-Con and dress up, I would dress up as Vignette. <laughs> you know? um, because she looks amazing. I love her costume. Um, would you dress up as anyone or go as yourself even? <laughs> I would, I, I, no, I, 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 you know, I love the people, the people, um, the people do. I find it very trippy if someone, if I, someone just came in dressed as me. In fact, on a slightly side note, uh, I had a stunt, stunt double during this season who, who looked exactly like me and was obviously wearing the exact copy of my <laughs> costume. And it was like, re- it took me a, a few hours. I kept looking at him over the course of the day being like, what, what is, how does this work? Are you, like anyway, a lovely Czech man, very very talented stuntman. Anyway, so I think based on that, I probably wouldn't love um, seeing multiple versions of myself <laughs> reflected back at me. But but uh, I hope one day to go to Comic Con and uh, yeah, maybe spot a uh, a Breakspear in the crowd. We will speak it into existence. And for my final question in in um, running theme of speaking things into existence, is there any director or actor that you guys would want to work with in your in your career going forward? it's my favorite question to ask everyone because i love speaking things into existence you guys can refer back to this and be like yeah i made it happen i love that question okay Mm. are you looking on a wall of movies that you have (laughs) yeah i'm like which one which one (laughs) i no i would love to go back in time and for peter jackson to put me in lord of the rings (laughs) the films (laughs) That would be that. That would be the dream. But also, I love Wes Anderson. Let's speak that into into reality. Wes, put me in a movie. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with those things. I'd love to work with Luca Guadagnino. That would be an absolute dream. I mean, um, he makes beautiful, you know, searing films, and I'd love to to work with him. Um, and yeah, there's so many actors that I'd love to work with. Um, and it, they'd sort of change based, you know, on what I'm watching at the time. But um, but um, yeah, the industry is, you know, is smaller than you think. And so I hope that if I stick, stick at it long enough, I'll get to meet and work with some of those people. A lot of whom I already work with on Carnival Row, like Jared Harris, Simon McBurney, Indira, and, and of course, Caroline Ford. Um, so yeah. Really. <laughs> well, fingers crossed we'll speak those into existence for you guys. So thank you guys so much for your time. I can't wait to see guys what you guys do next in your career. And I look forward to everyone seeing the uh, second season. Thank you thank so you. much.